If you ask anyone, and I include the people in this room, uh, what the big challenge is in the 21st century regarding population, the answer will be our population is growing too fast and we have to find a way to get it to slow. That we don't have the resources, the food, the environment to sustain a population that's growing from, 11, from 7 billion to 11 billion, which is what the United Nations projects. But the United Nations is wrong. The population is not going to grow from 7 billion to 11 billion. The population is going to grow from about 7 billion to 9 billion. Um, some say even 8 billion. Uh, but sometime in the middle of this century, the growth is going to stop and it's going to start to go down. This will be the first time in human history that the planet's population has started to decline. It may have declined during the Black Death. We're not sure. We don't have enough data about China and India. Um, but certainly it would be the first time since the Black Death that the population's planet has declined. And unlike the Black Death, this will be deliberate. Our planet, we have chosen to put our population in decline through the millions and millions of individual choices about, the, about family size. And essentially what has happened starting in the 1800s and going right through to the day, people think that this is something that began in the 1970s. It didn't. It began in the 1800s. People began to urbanize. As they urbanized, two things happened. A child went from being an asset to being a liability. Another pair of hands on the farm to being just another mouth to feed. The second thing that happened was that women started to gain power. Um, when, an urban, when a woman moves to a city, she gets access to education and she gets access to other women. And the first thing that happened when women moved to cities, whether it's a favela in Rio de Janeiro, where Daryl was just last <coughs> week, um, or in Brussels, uh, where I was in March, um, or in Nairobi, where Daryl has been, or in Seoul, where I was a few weeks, a couple months ago. The first thing that happens when a woman moves into a city, no matter where that is, is she starts to, be, she starts to get educated and she starts to have fewer babies. So urbanization and female empowerment lead to fewer babies. And this started, as I said, in the early 1800s. The average American woman in 1800 had seven children. The average American woman in 1900 had four. The average American woman um, in 1970 had two. Uh, there was a little blip called the baby boom, but it was just a blip and it didn't last hardly any time at all. And then we went back to this centuries-long trend. And now we have about 1.5 children. In all the developed nations of the world, the, uh, the rate is around 1.5. That's not enough to sustain the population, which is why already dozens of countries are starting to lose population, which is why in the next 20 or 30 years, dozens more will start to lose population, and which is why by the middle of the century, even in places like Africa, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East, where the birth rates still remain high, those birth rates are already coming down, and they're going to come down faster. And then we'll start to get smaller, and every year there will be fewer of us. What will it be like to live in a world in which every year there are fewer of us than there were the year before? Where in every city and country in the world there are more 50-year-olds and 40-year-olds, and more 40-year-olds and 30-year-olds, more 10-year-olds than people just being born. It's going to completely reshape the way we think about our planet and about, a, about each other. It's going to reshape our economies and our environment and our geopolitics. It's going to be profound and it's going to per be permanent and it's time we start to think about it. And that's what we're doing.